Uh, in a moment, I'm going to introduce our first keynote speaker, Justin Kahn. Justin is the founder of three YC companies. He is now running a company called Atrium, which you're going to hear about later this afternoon. But before that, he was the founder of Justin.tv, and he actually presented up here on this stage eight years ago, back when he was running Justin.tv. And he's going to tell you some really awesome stories from what happened back then, and talk about why you should or should not work for a startup. So, please welcome Justin Kahn. Thank you, Jared, for giving away my talk. Uh, it's me, Justin Kahn. I am YC's remedial student. Um, I had lost track, actually, of the number of times I'd been through YC uh, until Jared reminded me. It's been three times, actually four, uh, at least. And um, some of those companies worked, some of them didn't. And my newest company, which went through YC in uh, the last batch in, in winter uh, 2018, is called Atrium. Um, and one of my team members will be up to tell you about that later. Uh, but what I want to talk about today, and it was supposed to be a surprise twist, but no longer, is uh, why you should, but also why you shouldn't join a startup. And I'm going to start with why you shouldn't join. Okay, there's a couple reasons. And I'm, my goal here is just to give you the most unfiltered, raw, feelings that I have uh, to help you make an informed decision. Uh, but there's lots of, lots of good reasons why you shouldn't, shouldn't join a startup. Um, number one, uh, the management at startups generally really sucks. <laughs> I wish I was joking, but no, it's, it's true. I used to joke that there were YC companies, there were two kinds of YC companies. Uh, there were the rocket ships with bad management, and then there were the other companies with bad management. Um, <laughs> And as kind of a corollary to that, uh, it is likely that if you join a startup, especially in early stage one, um, you won't necessarily get enough mentorship or direction on what you're doing unless you really uh, actively force people to give it to you. Um, second reason, uh, you are likely to not actually get rich joining a startup. Uh, it's statistically improbable that if you think you're gonna join a startup and then be set for life, that is unlikely to happen. Um, so that, that would not be a good reason to join. <laughs> I'm sorry I ever told you different. Um, and then the third reason, which I think is a new reason in Silicon Valley, actually, is as Silicon Valley has matured in the last 10 years since Jared and I have kind of gotten here, uh, one of the things that I think has changed is people, you know, originally when I got here, I think people just wanted to work on interesting shit. And it was a much smaller number of people. Uh, now I think that there's a lot of people who come to Silicon Valley because it's a great career and there's a great trajectory, and there's um, stability, and if you want uh, like those things, you should not join a startup. <laughs> um, you know, I've noticed more and more people, even, even people I've recruited uh, more recently, uh, have coming in and saying, you know, what's the career pathing here? What's the, you know, where's the, what's the, what's the five-year plan? And I'm like, we don't have five years of money. <laughs> so if you want stability, I think you should go join Facebook. Maybe, maybe not today, but next, <laughs> next, next week, next week. All right, all right, so now on to what you really came for, which is why you should join a startup. And I, um, when I was writing this in the parking lot five minutes ago, I identified three reasons. All right, number one, you will get access to jobs that you're completely unqualified for, and you might not be able to do. Um, so my example actually comes from that very first work for a startup, uh, Eight years ago, you know, I was on stage talking about Justin TV, and we actually recruited someone from that, uh, and his name was Guillaume. A f uh, he was a f from France programmer, and actually he came to work for a startup and got two offers from two different companies. One was uh, Justin TV, and one was actually Scribd, Jared's company. And uh, I sat down with Guillaume, I remember, in a, a coffee shop after work for a startup, and he said, oh, I have this offer from Scribd, and I said, what was it? He told me. I was like, I'll pay you $10,000 more right now to sign this instant. And so he accepted, <laughs> sorry Jared. <laughs> he accepted and he, and he joined uh, Justin TV and within a year he was running our entire <laughs> Rails backend for a site that was like a top 100 site and I think a top 10 to 20 Rails site at the time, it was like uh, in 2010 so the bar was a lot lower. Um, 
And that was a job he was like completely unqualified for, and he would never have gotten the opportunity to do if you didn't join a startup where we didn't really have anyone else uh, to do it. And I, he went on, actually, uh, this is a pretty cool story. He went on, we spun out a company called Social Cam a couple years later. He went on to be the co-founder of that company as we uh, spun it out at Justin TV, went through YC, and um, got an even greater scale challenge when they scaled to um, like from zero to 128 million users in like two months. And so, you know, just the rate of learning for him was like pretty incredible. And he's gone on to, now he's a co-founder at a company called Triple Byte uh, that does recruiting for YC uh, companies and others. Um, okay, so that's number one. You are going to get access to jobs you are not qualified for. Number two is start, uh, joining a startup is a really good gateway to starting your own startup, if that's a goal of yours. Uh, in the second work for a startup, uh, we, in 2012, I came back with, with another company called Exec, and I recruited someone else, actually, someone really talented. His name was Finn Barr, and he was an engineer at Groupon at the time. And um, I think he really wanted to break into startups with the idea of eventually uh, starting his own. Um, and I think one of the things that's really important is to just put yourself in positions where you're around people who want to do the things that you want to do, or, or people who are like the person that you want to become. Uh, one of my co-founders of Twitch, uh, his, his name is Emmett, uh, always told me that you, know, you are the average of your five closest friends. And he wasn't talking about just me, he was talking about everybody in general. And um, I, I really think that's the case. So Finbar went on, he was like, you know, working at Exec, that company didn't work out super good, but he ended up uh, meeting a co-founder there and starting a startup, uh, which was a horrible idea. It was a terrible idea, I told him not to do it at the time. But uh, he ended up getting his start, right? He was like, he became a, a founder, that didn't work out, he ended up joining YC for, I think, just over a year, and then started a new startup that just went through YC and uh, is off to the races and doing super good. Um, I won't give away that, it's called Shogun, you should check it out and, and probably work there. Um, okay, so starting your own startup, that's the second reason. The third thing is to maximize your, oh, I should slow down, I still have a lot of time, sorry. <laughs> the third thing <laughs> is to maximize your own speed of learning. I think this is actually the most important reason why you should join a startup. Um, and I have kind of two examples of, um, of people who, had, who did that uh, working, working with me. And uh, they are both the two co-founders of Cruise. And uh, I, I think that they're cool examples because uh, one is kind of maximizing uh, learning on the way up and the other on the, on the way down. And I'll explain what that means. So uh, the first uh, co-founder of Cruise, his name's Kyle Vogt. Uh, we recruited him at Justin TV in the early days. Um, to, he was an MIT student and we had, um, found him and he was like kind of this person that we thought we needed because he was this hardware hacker and we thought we were gonna build a hardware company. And so we convinced him to come out from MIT and for his like um, the, that month long break during January and we bought him a one, one way ticket and we were like just work for a month and then we never bought him a ticket back. <laughs> and uh, Kyle, <laughs> Kyle uh, basically became our VP engineering. And uh, the, he was, became a co-founder, actually, and, and the VP engineering. And Kyle's an amazing hacker. He's always has been very uh, amazing tinkerer and, and one of those people with a can-do attitude. He's just gonna, you know, if you're like, hey, let's build this thing, he's gonna go figure out how to build it. But he didn't know jack shit about scaling systems or building, uh, you know, scalable system architectures. Um, and so that was like the job that was available, though as soon as we stopped, uh, we figured out that we should not build hardware. And so that was, that's the, the job we kind of assigned him. And <laughs> he had to figure it out um, really like on the fly. Uh, and so he ended up, um, you know, packing this live video system. There was nothing kind of, um, there was nothing, there was, there, was, there was like no precedent, right? We, we basically built this scalable uh, dynamic live video system that he engineered and architected uh, mostly badly at first, actually, um, and it would, went, it would go down all the time. Uh, we ended up, <laughs> there was this one uh, kind of funny story where, you know, we had no idea about, like, we had no idea how to build reliable systems, and so um, every time it would go down, we would, like, call him, which was, like, every, like, 36 to 48 hours, and um, he, so he could, like, never go on vacation, which was, like, not really acceptable to him, so it was just, like, one time he was just, like, I'm going, 
goodbye, basically. And we're like, no, what, what's going to happen if you're like not around? He ends up, he went to Tahoe or something like that. We ended up, um, it, of course, like clockwork, after you know, 36 hours, the site went down. And we had no way we were calling him on the phone at like 10 times. It's a live video site, so if it doesn't work, it doesn't have any value, right? Like just right then. So we started calling him, and uh, he didn't pick up. Luckily, I had left the address. We ended up having to order a pizza to go to his house to read a message to him, like a pizza delivery driver. <laughs> read the message, like, answer your phone, the website is down. <laughs> so, like, that was like our concept of like a pager system at the time, right? So really figuring everything out, you know, one step at a time, kind of inventing everything from scratch. Um, the end of the story is he eventually architected this live video system that by the time Twitch sold to Amazon in uh, 2014 uh, was the fourth largest bandwidth uh, consumer in North America, 15 points of presence around the world, uh, did 90 petabytes of data transfer a month. And so, you know, I mean, his rate of learning was incredible as a, as a software architect and obviously kind of went on and took a lot of that to Cruise, which is um, also an incredible story. The other co-founder of Cruise was uh, my brother, Daniel, who met Kyle actually as an intern at Justin TV when he was a, co a college student. Uh, we recruited him, not really recruited, it was more like uh, nepotism. <laughs> I'm sorry, I hope he's not watching right now. I'm just, that's, that's fucked up, that's fucked up to say. Uh, so no, he was, he, 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 <laughs> he also um, had a like, crash course in, in startups over the next uh, couple years. Didn't work for me for very long, but when he did work for me, he, um, he recruited these guys to the site. I remember Justin TV when we were doing like the uh, kind of live streaming uh, site. He recruited this, this uh, unknown band. Uh, it was called the Jonas Brothers. <laughs> and they, um, they ended up like crashing our site. I mean, they were part of the reason that Kyle hated his life. Ended up crashing the site over and over again. But the cool thing was he joined as this intern. He got to like, you know, um, interact and, and kind of like make a deal with like what was basically like became the number one kind of teen band at the time in, in 2007. And then later on, you know, he joined me as a uh, co-founder when I started this other company, Exec, uh, in 2012. And the cool thing, you know, I, I mentioned that, you know, Kyle's kind of the ex example of like how you might learn at a startup as the startup's growing and on, on the way up. I think Daniel's a perfect example of how you will also learn and maximize your learning if the startup is completely and horribly failing. Um, because we, in 2013, by the time we had worked on exec for a couple of years, uh, we realized that the home cleaning business is not a great business. I recommend you don't join a home cleaning startup. Um, <laughs> and he, uh, we ended up trying to sell it. And this is a great story. Um, this is my last story. This is a great story. So we were, we were trying to sell it. We ended up negotiating uh, a deal with a company called Handy that's in the uh, East Coast. And against all odds, has survived in this industry. Um, and we negotiated the deal, and I'm, I'm, I, like it was taking forever. There was like tons of lawyers. Uh, it was dragging and dragging and dragging, and I was so burned out, I was just like, I'm going on vacation. Daniel, you have to deal with it. It's not a very responsible thing to do, but. <laughs> <laughs> and so he ended up um, having to be the one who closed this deal over the next like month um, while I was in Thailand. I mean, I was like kind of doing stuff on the phone, but he was mostly like running this deal for a, not a lot of money, um, you know, just a, a bit of, of stock from Handy. And um, he ended up like, it was like a horrible experience. He learned all about like negotiating, uh, you know, from and, and when you want to have leverage in a deal, when you, you know, wh when you should, like all the things, all the different minutia of negotiating a deal. And he learned it on this very small, horrible deal, which we were mostly just trying to offload because we were, like, we were so burned out, we wanted to get out of the business. Um, two years later, fast forward two years, he had become a co-founder of Cruise. Cruise had built an amazing technology team uh, that was executing super well. And you, know, you guys know the end of the story. They ended up selling to GM for a billion dollars. And he applied, the cool thing, I think, is that Daniel applied all of those horrible lessons he learned from like, trying to negotiate this shitty piddling deal uh, for our company to his next company and ended up, uh, you know, they sold it for over a billion dollars. So, you're gonna learn something. Whether the company succeeds or fails, you'll probably walk away with something valuable. Uh, the last thing I'll say is that um, the way I think about it uh, is, uh, the way I think, I think about growing and like your, your, your speed of learning, maximizing your speed of learning is um, from a quote that uh, our YC partner, Paul Buhite, had uh, 
as generally said, I think he says it to every batch, uh, which is that you know it's not your y-intercept, uh, but it's your slope that's important. And so I think you want to you know the way I've, I've always thought about it is how do I figure out ways that I can put myself in the position to maximize my own personal rate of growth and rate of learning. And I suggest that you do the same, regardless of whether that's at a startup or not. All right, best of luck.